Hi, first graders. I'm so excited to read another story with you today. Our story today is Dear Juno, and the author who wrote the words is Soyoung Pak, and the illustrator who drew the pictures is Susan Kathleen Hartung. Today, you are going to be a solution sloth and think about how the problem is solved in the story. Let's be a what I know walrus, which reminds us to think about what we know about the topic of a book before we read. The topic of this book is about writing letters and writing letters to somebody who doesn't speak the same language as you. Have you ever written a letter? Have you ever gotten a letter? Have you ever talked to someone who doesn't speak the same language? Let's be a wondering wolf, which reminds us to ask questions before, during, and after reading. For example, I wonder who he's writing to. I wonder if they're giving him letters in the mail as well. I wonder if they speak the same language. What do you wonder? When you're reading today, you are going to be a solution sloth. A solution sloth reminds us to think about the problem and then how the problem is solved. So Juno is going to have a problem in this story and I want you to think about how he solves this problem. I can't wait to see your thinking. Let's get to reading. We are going to read Dear Juno. The author who wrote the words is Soi Young Pak and the illustrator who drew the pictures is Susan Kathleen Hartung. While you're reading, please think about being a solution sloth and think about how Juno solves the problem in the story. Enjoy. Juno watched the red and white blinking lights soar across the night sky like shooting stars and waited as they disappeared into faraway places. Juno wondered where they came from. He wondered where they were going. And he wondered if any of the planes came from a little town near Seoul where his grandmother lived and where she ate persimmons every evening before bed. Juno looked at the letter that came that day. It was long and white and smudged. He saw the red and blue marks on the edges and knew the letter came from far away. His name and address were neatly printed on the front, so he knew the letter was for him. But best of all, the special stamp on the corner told Juno the letter was from his grandmother. Through the window, Juno could see his parents. He saw bubbles growing in the sink. He saw dirty dishes waiting to be washed. He knew he would have to wait for the cleaning to be done before his parents could read the letter to him. Maybe I can read the inside too, Juno said to his dog, Sam, even though he and his grandmother spoke and wrote different languages. Sam wagged his tail. Very carefully, Juno opened the envelope. Inside, he found a letter folded into a neat, small square. He unfolded it and the letter was written in Korean. Tucked inside were a picture and a dried flower. Juno looked at the letters and words he couldn't understand. He pulled out the photograph. It was a picture of his grandmother holding a cat. He pulled out the red and yellow flower. It felt light and gentle like a dried leaf. Juno smiled. Come on, Sam, Juno said. Let's find mom and dad. Grandma has a new cat, Juno said as he handed the letter to his mother, and she's growing red and yellow flowers in her garden. How do you know she has a new cat? Juno's father asked. She wouldn't send me a picture of a strange cat, said Juno. I guess not, said Juno's father. How do you know the flower is from her garden, asked Juno's mother. She wouldn't send me a flower from someone else's garden, Juno answered. No, she wouldn't, said Juno's mother. Then Juno's mother read him the letter. Dear Juno, how are you? I have a new cat to keep me company. I named him Juno after you. He can't help me weed, but the rabbits are no longer around because of the cat. Grandma. Just like you read it yourself, Juno's father said. I did read it, Juno said. Yes, you did, said his mother. At school, Juno showed his class his grandmother's picture and dried flower. His teacher even pinned the letter to the board. All day long, Juno kept peeking at the flower from his grandmother's garden. He didn't have a garden that grew flowers, but he had a swinging tree. Juno looked at the letter pinned to the board. Did his grandmother like getting letters too? Yes, Juno thought. 
She likes getting letters just like I do, so Juno decided to write one. After school, Juno ran to his backyard. He picked a leaf from the swinging tree, the biggest leaf he could find. Juno found his mother who was sitting at her desk. He showed her the leaf. I'm going to write a letter, he told her. I'm sure it will be a very nice letter, she answered and gave him a big yellow envelope. Yes, it will, Juno said, and then he began to draw. First, he drew a picture of his mom and dad standing outside the house. Second, he drew a picture of Sam playing underneath his big swinging tree. Then very carefully, Juno drew a picture of himself standing under an airplane in a starry nighttime sky. After he was finished, he placed everything in the envelope. Here's my letter, Juno announced proudly. You can read it if you want. Juno's father looked in the envelope. He pulled out the leaf. Only a big swinging tree could grow a leaf this big, he said. Juno's mother pulled out one of the drawings. What a fine picture, she said. It takes a good artist to say so much with a drawing. Juno's father patted Juno on the head. It's just like a real letter, he said. It is a real letter, Juno said. It certainly is, said his mother. Then they mailed the envelope and waited. Tia Isa wants a car, but we don't have enough, I tell Senor Leo, who is sweeping his fruit store. He stops to scratch his shiny head and has an idea. One day, a big envelope came. It was from Juno's grandmother. This time, Juno didn't wait at all. He opened the envelope right away. Inside, Juno found a box of colored pencils. He knew she wanted another letter. Next, he pulled out a picture of his grandmother. He noticed she was sitting with a cat and two kittens. He thought for a moment and laughed. Now his grandmother would have to find a new name for her cat in Korea. Juno was a boy's name, not a girl's. Then he pulled out a small toy plane. Juno smiled. His grandmother was coming to visit. Maybe she'll bring her cat when she comes to visit, Juno said to Sam as he climbed into bed. Maybe you two will be friends. Soon Juno was fast asleep, and when he dreamed that night, he dreamed about a faraway place, a village just outside Seoul, where his grandmother, whose gray hair sat on top of her, Tia Isa wants a car, but why does it take so long to save? Sometimes it's hard to wait for good things to happen, she says. Then she reads me Mommy's letter. Ablil is feeling a little better. Mommy feeds him crab soup. Poppy plays him old songs on his guitar. The cool air feels crisp against her cheek, crisp enough to crackle, he dreams, like the golden leaves which cover the persimmon garden. First graders, I hope you enjoyed this story. You are now gonna to go to Seesaw and complete your activities. You're going to be a solution sloth. I want you to think about how did Juno solve the problem of he and his grandmother not speaking and writing the same language? How did he write his letters and communicate? I can't wait to see your thinking.